ultimatum was made in a phone call between American Secretary of State John Kerry and his Russian counterpart Sergei Lavrov. The US State Department also said it's looking at non-diplomatic avenues for responding to the situation. Extremist groups will continue to exploit uh, the, the vacuums that are there in Syria to expand their operations, um, which will include, no, no question, uh, attacks against uh, Russian interests, perhaps even Russian cities. Um, and uh, Russia will continue to send troops home uh, in body bags. Well, those words didn't go unnoticed by Moscow, with uh, officials calling such comments inappropriate for a diplomat. Don't you think that such ventriloquism about body bags, terrorist attacks in Russian cities and loss of aircraft sounds more like a get em command rather than a diplomatic comment? Of course, you can continue to try and convince everyone that they're trying unsuccessfully to separate our Nusra terrorists from the opposition. Once again, I would say that we are fully ready to continue dialogue with our American partners and cooperate in the fight against terrorists in Syria. However, any threats to our servicemen or even hints of such threats are absolutely inappropriate in this dialogue. Meanwhile, the US Secretary of State said Russia was responsible for the worsening situation in Syria. The conflict has indeed escalated since the US-Russia broken ceasefire ended violently two weeks ago. Hopes for an extension were dashed when Washington then blamed Moscow for an attack on a UN aid convoy, an allegation Russia rejects. However, even while the deal was still in force, well over 100 violations were attributed to the US-backed opposition. One of the biggest rebel groups, Ahra al-Sham, refused to comply with the agreement at all. Artis Gyanchkian asked the State Department why it's insisting Moscow was responsible for the failure of the ceasefire. Looking at the events that followed the ceasefire, how is it fair to say that Russia is solely responsible for the failure of this deal? Because, and we've said this many, many times, uh, they, they have influence on Assad. I didn't make that Are up. Are you saying that you don't have influence with the rebels? We do, and so do some of our uh, allies and partners as well. And if the US does have influence with these rebel groups, why the hundreds of ceasefire violations? Why, why, why did that happen? We, we have influence over some, not all. We have, uh, there the are, there are, just rebel group there just are, refuse to abide by that there deal. are other nations that have influence. And again, we have, uh, we have admitted that not all the opposition groups on every single day, uh, okay. completely uh, abided by it. Can you admit that part of the responsibility for the failure of this deal lies with the rebels and with the U.S.? I think we've been nothing but honest uh, about the fact that there have been violations uh, of the ceasefire and the cessation of hostilities on all sides. While essentially admitting that the U.S. had not delivered on its responsibilities under this deal, the U.S. now threatens to cut ties with Moscow. Washington says that way it wants to stop Russia's bombing of civilians in Aleppo. And this prompted some of my questions on whether the U.S. is consistent in that regard when it comes to dealing with other countries. The U.S. has expressed grave concern over what Saudi Arabia is doing in Yemen by hitting civilian targets there. Why isn't the U.S. Cutting, threatening to cut ties with Saudi Arabia? We have, uh, the Secretary talked about this when we were in Jeddah a few, a few weeks ago. We have been honest with the Saudis about our concerns over, uh, over uh, the lack of precision in some strikes. Um, and uh, and uh, we've talked to them about the importance of conducting investigations. But Saudi Arabia is doing there what Russia is accused of doing in Syria, so I'm... No. No. How is that consistent? <laughs> because what we're seeing the Russians do, and I would love to see you ask your government some of these questions. You know, Russia today never does that. You never poke and prod oh, right. your own government. Go on. But so, every, so, so, you attack so, me when you want to evade a question. No, no, I'm not, I'm not attacking you. I'm not attacking you. I'm not attacking you. I would just love to see your institution ask these same kind of questions of your own government. This is not the first time John Kirby tries to evade my questions by changing the conversation to RT. Is, is it, I'm sorry, should I not, should I not ask, uh, should I not be asking what the, what the U.S. assessment of you, you, Turkish actions is? I'm going to take this one, is? then I'm going to come to should you. Can, should I not be asking that question? Can, exactly which question should I be embarrassed about, sir? You can ask me whatever you want. I'm just stunned that you're not embarrassed by some of the questions you ask. And I exactly noticed, which I noticed question? that, I notice uh, that RT very rarely asks any tough questions of their own government. 
the U.S. strike that reportedly killed around 20 civilians in the ISIL-held city of Mon Beach in Syria, was it a mistake on Monday? That's another great accusatory question you've asked here. Needless to say, this is not going to stop me from asking the State Department questions which I think are fair and informative for our viewers. In Washington, I'm Ganesh Chakyan, RT. Meanwhile, an interview has emerged showing an alleged commander from the terror group formerly known as al-Nusra in it. He admitted indirect support for, from the US and added that more would be useful. <laughs> Yes, the U.S. supports the opposition, but not directly. They support the countries that back us. However, we are still not satisfied with this support. They should support us with advanced weapons. We were winning the fights thanks to Tau missiles. With these, we gained parity with the regime. We received tanks from Libya via Turkey and multiple rocket launching systems too. The regime's only advantage is tactical aircraft, rockets and rocket launchers. We captured some of the rocket launchers and received a lot from abroad. Thanks to the Tau missiles, we are able to keep the situation under control in many areas. We got the missiles directly. They were delivered to a certain group. When the road was closed and was encircled, we had officers from Turkey, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Israel and the US here. Doing what? They were experts, experts on how to use satellites, missiles, reconnaissance operations, and thermal observation cameras. Also American advisors? Yes, there were experts from many countries. Also American? Yes. And while the State Department denies supporting the terrorist group, they did admit some of their allies could be assisting such groups. We spoke exclusively to Jürgen Toddenhofer, the journalist who interviewed the al Nusra commander there, and he told us the Americans know their weapons will end up in terrorist hands. They are using allies and they are allowing their allies. It doesn't matter if a Tau rocket, a Tau missile, which is an American missile, comes from the from another group this is well known and if i deliver weapons to a moderate to so so-called moderate group in syria everybody knows that at the end the weapons will be in the hands of the terrorists i would be happy if the spokesman of the state department would be true but it's very clear that the americans know that their weapons will at the end be in the hands of terrorists and they know that.